Um, guys, let's talk about how this room, assuming Alvin Henderson signs with Auburn, Auburn is looking to bring in uh, another running back in this class since they didn't sign a running back uh, in the previous class. You bring in two more, you bring in an additional running back. That's two for this class. What does the future of this running back room look like? Obviously, we know that Jarquez Hunter, this will likely be his last year. But what about the remaining guys in that room? And I, I know you've been you've been doing a little bit of investigative work. You have not seen Sean Jackson on the roster for Auburn. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, he nope. hasn't shown up on the roster nope. in a while. I don't know. I, I haven't gotten any definitives around what his status is, but yeah, he's not shown up on the roster, even the revamped roster that they put on the website. The website's been redone, by the way, for those who haven't visited the website in a while. So, yeah. Yeah. What does the future look like? Um, obviously, Alvin Henderson is a is a guy that's coming into this team. They're, they're, they're look to have a plan for him, but Auburn isn't short. <laughs> They're not short on talented guys in that room, obviously. Mm-hmm. So what does that room look like to you in terms of who's going to be the featured guy? Does does Is Jarquez the only person who leaves, in your opinion? You know, we talked about we've talked about these types of uh, scenarios with the QB position. Right now, we got to ask, OK, what happens to a Damari Austin? What about a Jeremiah Cobb? Where does Alvin Henderson fit into this this running back room in terms of what do you think his role could potentially be yeah, in your one? I think the main question you have to answer is, does uh, Jeremiah Cobb somehow jump Damari Austin this year? Right? You know, it, 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 because if, if that happens, Damari's out of here. Yeah. She's right. out of here, right? So, uh, you know, what is the role going to be? Is it going to be a more of a running back by committee? Because they they found ways to get Cobb his time last year. And this is one thing that I've I've seen about Hugh Freeze's staff. Uh, it doesn't matter how young you are. If they want to play you, they're going to play you. They're going to show you that you're a priority. And Cobb got on the field enough to burn his red shirt last year. They used him. He he made some big plays. He, he, he got in the end zone last year. <laughs> well, all the other guys they had in that running back room, he scored touchdown, meaningful touchdowns. So uh, it, it, it's clear that they like him. Now, if I'll take you back to the first spring freeze was here, and he said openly that Damari Alston was way better than they gave him credit for. Mm-hmm. He did say that. Um, but I, I just have, I have questions about how they're going to try to split this thing up. Uh, it's, it's Jarquez right now, Damari... 2A and Cobb 2B, if you ask me. I, I would put them 2A and 2B. And, and, then, and then health always comes into the question. You know, if he can't make it through a whole season, then I definitely think, you know, and Cobb does, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be difficult. Mm. Right, so I, I would look for... I would look for the – I'm 50-50 on whether Damari stays or goes. Okay. I'm 50-50 on that. Ike, your thoughts, man? Yeah, similarly to what Mike said, it's about how it goes this season, I think, will determine what happens next season. I don't think the presence of Alvin Henderson immediately means anything for either of the two guys that would be presumptively coming back next season in Damari Austin and uh, Jeremiah Cobb. But the distribution of carries this season will say a lot about kind of what this new free system means for running backs, right? Because we don't we don't fully know how Coach Freeze in- anticipates utilizing running backs in this system with uh, Derek Nix as the play caller. Um, but I think if Damari is able to be a solid number two back, then he would presumptively be the number one he would he would see what his role would look like as the new Jarquez Hunter next season and then Cobb could firmly see okay if DA was the 2B or the the second option at running back that's what I should look like as a translation to next season and hopefully you know as the passing game continues to improve everybody gets more opportunities because we're staying on the field longer XYZ you can kind of do the calculus and the math of okay well if this season I got this many carries and I was the number two back next season the number one back got this many carries so you can say all right I'm in a good place and I should stay put 
if, like Mike said, this season you don't really see the number two back getting a lot of opportunities and you're Jeremiah Cobb and you walk into next season, you're like, I don't I don't know what being the number two back at Auburn means for me unless I am poised to be the number one back that next season and I can just wait for year three, which would mean that's the year I'm draft eligible and I can see what my future looks like as I'm the number one back. That kind of progression stuff. Um, but and, and again, Mike already said this, if if those roles flip and Jeremiah Cobb becomes the number two back this season, there's no reason Damari Austin should stick around. Yeah. Like you, you, you have to do a lot of convincing to make a guy in his senior season say, I'm going to be the number two back in an offense that has a clear feature back in that offense. And I'm splitting carries with him. That doesn't do well for his potential NFL future. He needs to go somewhere where he can be the guy. Um, Does Demar get a COVID be, season? Does he get a COVID season? I don't know if they. I think we're. I oh, think he came this in last one too late. Been, yeah. yeah, he came in one too. He doesn't get a COVID year. He doesn't get a COVID year. Um, I, the, so, does so yeah, that, that'd be the, the the math that he'd be trying to work out in, in that situation? What does Derek? Uh, what factor does Derek Nix play into this? Running backs coach slash OC. Well, in terms of getting these guys opportunities and whatnot, Derek Nix loves Demari Austin. So, like, you know, if it's up to him, they're going to find a role for him. But, like I said, the reality of how it plays out on the field is not something Derek Nix can control. <laughs> so, you know, how they, he's going to have to, like, when, when Demar gets in the game, what kind of situations are they putting him in? And those first three or four games are so crucial because you've got cupcakes. <laughs> And that's your chance to kind of get your footing. Like, Jar- even though they played a cupcake, Jarquez Hunter missing game one, it definitely hurt him game two versus Cal. He just looked rusty. Yeah. They need that first game, man, <laughs> to kind of get their, yeah. their game day legs under them and, and get rolling. So, uh, you know, that, that one game, missing that one game was the only thing that kept him from being a 1,000-yard back last year. Yeah, for sure. Would have been sure. a thousand yard back easily. So Derek Nix, you know, he likes the guys that he has in his room right now. And I would argue in totality, because look, Quinshawn Junkins is a great back. Right? You know, he did some good things, but I was told he was problem in some other areas. Uh, but the totality of this room right now, I know I know he loves the makeup of this room. And and if you're a coach, you're concerned primarily with depth. Right, like, because there's no such thing as a bell cow back anymore, guys. <laughs> These guys get right. hurt at too high a rate for you to run one guy into the ground. You know, like, uh, I'm I'm really gonna date myself here, but like, uh, but he even had a running mate. When you think about backs like Darren McFadden, uh, he was running with Felix Jones. It's kind of like the change of pace guy. But mm-hmm. you know, like, when was the last time you saw a running back that it was like? This dude is getting like 80% of the carries. <laughs> I don't keep up enough with some of these other. Um, Think about it. Think about it. know what they do. But, like even, you know. you know what I mean? Like uh, uh, Trent Richardson kind of ran the ball like that a little bit. Yeah. I guess. Like, I mean, it's just been, it's, it's, it's really, really hard to do. Um, and that's why you see running back in the draft. Uh, uh, it's not so much anymore. They're, I, I they're think you saw it. I people. think you saw when the league league was putting a heavy premium on running backs. You saw guys getting their carries to get that exposure. Correct. But, but it's, now it's, not, it's it's pointless. Now it's almost that. rare to have a top ten pick that's a running back <laughs> right. because everybody's like, we there's always going to be diamonds in the rough, and we're doing that by committee anyway. Right. To try, yeah, I don't know. I mean, so. T- the Texas kid that went to Atlanta was a top 10 pick. I don't know what the distribution of carries were at Texas for him. You know, that seat was, that was just two, what, was years, two ago. years ago. Yeah. 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 Who, who's that guy? Uh, uh, I can't think of what his name is. Someone in the chat. Sure. Yeah. 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 Chat help us out. Y'all are so good at this. But um, yeah, any Atlanta fans will definitely know who it's talking about. Um, but yeah, so again, it's not something that happens often. And uh, B.J. Robinson, Robinson, Robinson. Robinson. Robinson, yes, B.J. Robinson. Robinson. Yes, B. John Robinson. Um, like yes. I said, I don't know what the distribution of carries were for uh, Texas uh, in that season for <laughs> him. But it is, it's becoming less and less a position where you're going to have just one guy that's doing it. Even when you talk about what Quid Sean Juckins was doing, Juckins was doing at o- Ole Miss, he still had another guy that was coming in, taking a portion of those carries, carries off yeah. of him. 
uh, Bentley, I think is his name, that was at Ole Miss. So, and, but you know, they were able to get Judkins thousand yard seasons there. So you can produce thousand yard backs and you can produce high producing running backs in a system um, and still split those carries. Yeah. With yeah. Else. Like, so I, that's what most coaches are trying to do to keep the tread, what Cadillac used to say, keep the tread off the tires for these guys uh, in college. One of the best backs to get drafted in the last few years definitely was uh, Saquon Barkley. Right. And he spent a lot of his first few years in the NFL hurt. <laughs> yeah. They they invested a lot in that guy. And like, man, he's struggling. And this is why I think you don't see so much of a focus on running back. They're like, look, we're going to they got a high rate of turnover and yeah. uh, we're doing it by now. committee. Yeah. Like so we could take a back in like the second, third, fourth round and we're going to get a diamond to the rough and we're going to pay a lot less for it over the long run doing it that way. And let's prioritize O-line, D-line. Uh, and on wide receiver, quarterbacks always are going to go at a premium in the draft, but they're they're looking at other positions primarily, or, you know, on those lines to fill out with. So, uh, you know, if you're you don't need if you're Damari, like I, last year, it felt like he was like you know. Um, Jarquez was getting kind of like he was getting the lion's share of the carries, but there was a second back that was five or six carries behind him, but definitely over 10 carries a game. And if you're like, you want to be that guy going into next year, that's getting closer to 20 carries than not per game, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and Payne Thorne has already said, like, listen, I'm not yeah, carrying the ball a hundred times that. this year. I'm you be, the ball you, you took the words year. out of my mouth. If, if, <laughs> if, if that holds true, and Peyton Thorne is actually utilizing his arm more this yeah, year. There's gonna be more carries there. A hundred more carries there for somebody. You 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 like to hear that if you're Demari. Or, or those are passes, but like you know, let, let if you split the difference. And but he's, he's out passing, there. Yeah, he's passing a little bit more because not all hundred of those runs are going to turn into passes, right? Yeah, but sure. there's room for growth on both because their play due to three and outs, their play rate was very low per game. So you you had uh, Peyton Thorne, who was about like 140 passes short of where Freeze wants him to be, pass attempts. And, it, you know, of that 120 rushes or whatever he had, right, you take half of those, you make them passes, and that helps him, right? And then you take half of those, you give them back to the running backs to take that load off of, 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 of Peyton. And then you increase your play rate because you're on the field longer running more plays. Yeah, more opportunity for everybody. It was, it was, there was very limited time to shine on offense for Auburn's offensive players last year because of the failure that was, you know, play calling at times. Yeah, for sure. It, it was for tough. Sure. For full episodes, make sure you head over to the War of Pores YouTube channel and check out the weekend tailgate. Every Sunday, we're going live. Join us on the live stream at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Until the next time, War Eagle.